I wanted to say first, I wanted to say thank you for taking the time today. Also, I wanted to thank you for um, exposing me to these important conversations as a teenager. You were like the one that I always remember. I watched all the real worlds, but you were the one that I always think of as, um, you know, teaching me, teaching me as a, as a white kid from a small white town, you know? So thank you. I wanted to say thank you. Oh my you. gosh. Well, you're yeah. very welcome. Thank you for yeah. taking those messages in as they were intended. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I loved watching you on Homecoming. Um, and I kept thinking, <laughs> that'd be so hard to go back to this time. And I was also thinking, did you watch the other Homecomings and think, oh, because that, that phone is going to ring and I'm going to have to <laughs> go back to. <laughs> yeah. You know, what was crazy is I, I watched Real World Homecoming New York because I, you know, when I tried out for the show, I had been a long time fan of the show. It had been on for eight seasons before mine. And Real World New York was one of, you know, I mean, honestly, groundbreaking television. I didn't know that at the time that I was watching it as a very young person. But when I was watching Homecoming New York, it was in a way where it was, yes, I'm watching it as a fan of the show, but I'm also watching it as a person who has a very specific niche understanding of what these people went through. And they were the pioneers in that. So just watching them have conversations about how they navigated their post-reality TV fame, which was kind of very famous, but not monetizable, was something that really resonated with me. So I, I very much enjoyed that first season. They were, LA had not come out yet when we were still filming. So there was oh, no wow. way for us. Yeah. So that, when we got home was the day that it premiered. So there were like many layers of um, thinking, oh my gosh, what did I just do? So I loved it going in because I watched Real World New York. And then coming out, I devoured LA when I got home because I was just like, oh, hold on. Is this what's going to happen? Yeah. But um, I think New Orleans had a very specific and different feel because it was, you know, young people that were also growing up with the internet. So the yeah. social media engagement this time around has been so fascinating and illuminating because all of these people were learning how to use, you know, live journal and Instagram and Tumblr and all of these things at the same time. So it's been really, I gotta be honest, it's been a really cool experience. I was scared for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> That's great to hear. Um, I was also thinking about what was it like having the cameras on you again? Like, I'm sure that had to be pretty jarring and like, oh, they're like watching me my every move. Yeah, because I, you know, something happened to me along the way in my, you know, post-reality TV recovery where I just hate cameras. There was a long time where you could Google image search, Melissa, you're not going to find anything because I don't have my picture taken. I don't go anywhere. <laughs> so jumping back into a house full of surveillance, I was like, oh my gosh, every day was like, what are we doing? What is this? What's happening? But Crazily enough, the body has a fascinating memory and also a way to forget. And you move into that house and all of a sudden it's kind of like you plug back into that little portal of who you were when you were 22 and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm really doing this. Um, it was weird, but also exhilarating, but also scary, but also cool. I, I mean, it's very hard to explain uh, the layers of that experience, but yeah, 24 hour cameras was a doozy. <laughs> Did they ever take days off? Like, did they have days off? Like that? Yeah, we that had a day like... off. <laughs> well, we had days off, but there were still cameras. Okay. Um, um, you know, there were still cameras on, but the days off were mostly so that we could um, break off into our separate interviews that you see on the show. So, like, okay. Yeah. So that there's like sense. a production mechanism for everything that they do. It's really genius how they do it. I got to be honest. I don't, I mean, obviously, Buna Marie. MTV knows what they're doing since they pioneered this entire yeah. genre, but like to step back into it as a participant and not a watcher was just like, oh, wow. Okay. This is how they're going to just watching them make the sausage was very fascinating for me. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. You know, I was also thinking about, I really love the, all the things that you guys address. Like I remember the episode with the boat, the swamp guy using the N word and yeah. like the discussion around it. And it also made me think how there were so many disclaimers on this show ahead of time. Like we're going to be talking about things. We didn't have disclaimers in 2000. Right. Yeah. Like, did you ever think about how the show would have been received in the age of like now, like if, it, if the show from 2000 came out now, like if I just feel like, First of all, you would have been everywhere on Twitter all the time. I feel like 
Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. Could you imagine that show with Twitter? I, honestly, oh I would have, I, I, I hunkered down, but I would have hunkered down deeper because <laughs> you never want to be the star of Twitter at any given day. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> I, the trigger warnings are fascinating. It's just supposed to show you like how language and how we consume media has changed over time. Um, it for a good, in a good way, you know, yeah. um, in a way where it's, it's allowing you to prepare yourself for what you are about to consume. And then you have a choice in whether or not you are going to continue. I thought that was really, um, smart and effective, but also a way to tell the audience, like, this is entertainment, but this is also education. And again, Buna Murray and MTV at the forefront of doing these new things. I think even the show, the premise of the show, you couldn't really do this show with another, um, you know, franchise. Yeah. Because this was the last time that we had, you know, this cast does the show and then another cast does a show and then another cast does a show. Nowadays, they have the same housewives come on for the entire franchise. So you don't, you already know what they're up to. There's no yeah. mystery around where have they been. And so it's kind of like we were seven strangers all over again. Yeah. Which is really fascinating. <laughs> that really, that really is fascinating. Wow. I never even thought about that. Um, did you have any expectations going into this that, that were met or maybe not met? Or were you surprised with how everything went down? Like Tokyo to me, I talked to him last week. He was such a pleasant surprise, like completely like, so happy with himself. It's a really beautiful thing to see, but I was wondering like, what were your expectations and were they met? Um, I was really so excited to see him um, just because I had always had a sadness about the way that the show ended. And um, I have to be honest, it was really hard for me when they show you the never before scenes or they rerun something that happened on the show. It like was a gut punch watching it at home. I had to text him the following day, like when they showed the uh, back then clip of me rallying everybody at that horrible house meeting. I was like, Tokyo, I'm so sorry because all of the signs were there that he was an introvert. Yeah. And I, as a young person, could not see that. I did not understand that. I think maybe even the viewing audience didn't understand that. And so mm. now he has this entire like understanding of who he is as a person and came really whole and full with that. And I was so excited to reconnect with him. And like, now we text each other. It's just like, it, <sighs> my expectation was to leave there um, with these people who are the only people really who could understand that experience yeah. um, as friends. And I, and I got that. I'm really happy with how that turned out. What, what a weird, unique, traumatizing, lovely gift. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do your kids think of it? Like, what do they think of your mom's fame and everything? And oh, like, gosh, they're so happy. I'm home to do everything for them again. Um, <laughs> My absence was, was, was a little <laughs> jarring for them. They're like, wait a second, dad's doing this. You know, um, I, I thought I was being a really good parent of a young preteen when I sat down my 13 year old and I was like, listen, I've been given this opportunity to revisit this reality show. I don't know if you know this about me, but I was on a reality show many years ago, long before you were born. And she's just staring at me blankly as if whatever I'm saying is really not that interesting. And she was like, finally was like, mom, I watched it on YouTube. No one cares. It's okay. Go ahead and go. <laughs> I was like, okay, let me just pack my things then. <laughs> um, they've been so, my littlest one really is fascinated because, you know, the little kids are growing up watching YouTube and, you know, being a famous person from videos is a real thing for them. So they're like, wait a second, you're a real famous person. And I'm like, hmm. It's streaming and there are a lot of options. Nobody still knows who I am, but it's fine. <laughs> you probably prefer it that way. <laughs> yes. Oh, this, especially, you know, I was doing the calculus of what it means to come back because remember in year 2000, real world, home, uh, real world New Orleans, this is before they started doing season after season after season. So MTV played our show ad nauseum in the same mm -hmm. way that they play ridiculous now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so... They played our show over and over and over again. And every weekend you had a marathon. Mm -hmm. And every weekend I would just stay in the house because I was like, oh, it's going to be me nonstop from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I mean, I remember it was just such a long day every Saturday. And I was like, 
if I come back and do this, I have to figure out like what it's going to mean for my day-to-day life. And then I think I said, you know, it's Paramount plus it's brand new, not realizing that Paramount had 60 million subscribers. I really (laughs) kept telling myself, there's only like what, 10,000 people that would watch this. (laughs) (laughs) And then I was like, it's also in the time of pandemic, we have masks. Didn't have those back then. That'd be good. So like, there were a lot of ways for me to get around and convince myself that this was a good thing to do, but I'm really glad I did it. (laughs) That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you did it too, because I think, I even think that the show is just like, I feel like now, even on social media, people can't have conversations where everybody has a different outlook, even if it's wrong. Like, and like looking at, I just love the conversations it starts that people are able to have, we're able to see people from different, where they come from and where they are. You know, it's, it's really great. Um, yeah, it's a special show in that way. I, yeah. I you know, I, I also you have been, you know, cause they, they give you a little blue check and they tell you to engage with the show and stuff. And I'm like, okay. And just the, imme- the immediacy of, of, of viewer response has been so like fascinating to see. And like, honestly, I've learned things about the way the audience perceives it versus how we lived it. It's just been such a cool experience I wish I could articulate better I'm sure it'll in 10 years I'll be able to figure out how weird this thing was and be able to explain it (laughs) but it has been just such a special little show yeah was there anything one final question was there anything that you wished you had done the second time around that you didn't get to I loved seeing the like murals and the the art that you guys did again and um, was there anything that you wanted to get to that you didn't get to you know I really wanted to take a tour of the original Belfort um yeah it wasn't it wasn't made available to us. And I'm wondering if part of the reason why it was unavailable is because Queer as Folk just rebooted and they're using the house. Oh, I just wow. That. And I was like, oh, okay. But I mean, this is the world we're in. We're rebooting, rebooting everything and nostalgia is very in right now. But um, I was happy that we didn't do it in the Belfort just because it would have added a layer of like weird, you know? Yeah. Just being in that space would have probably been a super weird spiritual experience. But yeah. I did want to revisit it just as a, you know, I got really great closure, but seeing that house would have been um, a little neat bow, but yeah. that's it. I really, other than that, I have no regrets. I have no, um, you know, feelings of FOMO. I had, I, I, it all went as good as it could possibly go. The checks cleared. It was, it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much for, I'm glad we were able to do this and I'm glad you were able to be on Real World Homecoming and um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a a good rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.